The Grave of King Arthur. By Thomas Wharton, author, from, Poems, A New Edition, pages. 63 to 72, 1777. Stately the feast, and high the cheer, girt with many an armed peer, Silgaran, in thy castle hall, and canopied with golden pall, sublime in formidable state, and warlike splendor, Henry Sate, prepared to stain the briny flood, of Shannon's lakes with rebel blood, illumining the vaulted roof, a thousand torches flamed aloof, from massy cups, with golden gleam, sparkled the red Metheglin's stream, to grace the gorgeous festival, along the lofty windowed wall, the storied tapestry was hung, with minstrelsy the rafters rung, of harps, that with reflected light, from the proud gallery glittered bright, while gifted bards, a rival throng, from distant Mona, nurse of song, from TV, fringed with umbrage brown, from Elvie's veil, and Cadder's crown, from many a shaggy precipice, that shades Ian's horse abyss, and many a sunless solitude, of Radnor's inmost mountains rude, to crown the banquet's solemn close, themes of British glory chose, and to the strings of various chime, a tempered thus the fabling rhyme, or Cornwall's cliffs the tempest roared, high the screaming sea mew soared, on Tintagel's topmost tower, darksome fell the sleety shower, round the rough castle shrilly sung, the whirling blast, and wildly flung, on each tall rampart's thundering side, the surges of the tumbling tide, when Arthur ranged his red cross ranks, on conscious Camelan's crimsoned banks, by Mordred's faithless guile decreed, beneath a Saxon spear to bleed, yet in vain a pain him foe, armed with fate the mighty blow, for when he fell, an elfin queen, all in secret, and unseen, or the fainting hero threw, her mantle of ambrosial blue, and bade her spirits bear him far, in Merlin's agate-axled car, to her green isle's enameled steep, in the navel of the deep, or his wounds she sprinkled dew, from flowers that in Arabia grew, on a rich, enchanted bed, she pillowed his majestic head, or his brow, with whispers bland, thrice she waved an opiate wand, and, to soft music's airy sound, her magic curtains closed around, there, renewed the vital spring, again he reigns a mighty king, and many a fair and fragrant clime, blooming in immortal prime, by gales of Eden ever fanned, owns the monarch's high command, thence to Britain shall return, if right prophetic rolls I learn, born on victory's spreading plume, his antient scepter to resume, once more, in old heroic pride, his barbed courser to bestride, his knightly table to restore, and the brave tournaments of yore, they ceased, when on the tuneful stage, advanced a bard, of aspect sage, his silver tresses, thin besprent, to age a graceful reverence lent, his beard, all white as spangles frore, that cloth Plinlimon's forests hoar, down to his harp descending flowed, with time's faint rose his features glowed, his eyes diffused a softened fire, and thus he walked the warbling wire, listen, Henry, to my reed, not from fairy realms I lead, bright robbed tradition, to relate, in forged colors Arthur's fate, though much of old romantic lore, on the blessed theme I keep in store, but boastful fiction should be dumb, where truth the strain might best become, if thine ear may still be won, with songs of Uther's glorious son, Henry, I a tale unfold, never yet in rhyme enrolled, nor sung nor harped in hall or bower, which in my youth's full early flower, a minstrel, sprung of Cornish line, who spoke of kings from old Lacrine, taught me to chant, one vernal dawn, deep in a cliff encircled lawn, what time the glistening vapors fled, from cloud enveloped Clyda's head, and on its sides the torrents gray, shone to the morning's orient ray, when Arthur bowed his haughty crest, no princess, 
veiled in azure vest, snatched him, by Merlin's potent spell, in groves of golden bliss to dwell, where, crowned with wreaths of mistletoe, slaughtered kings in glory go. But when he fell, with winged speed, his champions, on a milk-white steed, from the battle's hurricane, bore him to Joseph's towered fane, in the fair vale of Avalon, there, with chanted orison, and the long blaze of tapers clear, the stoled fathers met the bier, through the dim eels, in order dread, of martial woe, the chief they led, and deep entombed in holy ground, before the altar's solemn bound, around no dusky banners wave, no mouldering trophies mark the grave, away the ruthless Dane has torn, each trace that time's slow touch had worn, and long, o'er the neglected stone, oblivion's veil its shade has thrown, the faded tomb, with honour due, tis thine, O Henry, to renew, thither, when conquest has restored, yon recreant isle, and sheathed the sword, when peace with palm has crowned thy brows, haste thee, to pay thy pilgrim vows, there, observant of my law, the pavement's hallowed depth explore, and thrice a fathom underneath, dive into the vaults of death, there shall thine eye, with wild amaze, on his gigantic stature gaze, there shalt thou find the monarch laid, all in warrior weeds arrayed, wearing in death his helmet crown, and weapons huge of old renown, martial prince, tis thine to save, from dark oblivion Arthur's grave, so may thy ships securely stem, the western frith, thy diadem, shine victorious in the van, nor heed the slings of Ulster's clan, thy Norman pikemen win their way, up the dun rocks of Harold's bay, and from the steeps of rough Kildare, thy prancing hoofs the falcon scare, so may thy bows unerring you, its shafts in Roderick's heart imbrue, amid the pealing symphony, the spiced goblets mantled high, with passions new the song impressed, the listening king's impatient breast, flash the keen lightnings from his eyes, he scorns awhile his bold emprise, even now he seems, with eager pace, the consecrated floor to trace, and ope, from its tremendous gloom, the treasures of the wondrous tomb, even now, he burns in thought to rear, from its dark bed, the ponderous spear, rough with the gore of Pictish kings, even now fond hope his fancy wings, to poise the monarch's massy blade, of magic tempered metal made, and drag today the dinted shield, that felt the storm of Camelan's field, or the sepulchre profound, even now, with arching sculpture crowned, he plans the chantry's choral shrine, the daily dirge, and rites divine.